hello and welcome back to another episode of Pokemon with Ditto and me. Today, um, we're doing something very dumb. We're inventing some very, very dumb sets that me and Ethan will both do. And hoping that we win some battles with them, I suppose. So, yeah, without further ado, let's go on to the teams. So, here's the team. First of all, of course, Scarf Megirina, which is, in theory, like, a replacement to Spectre after it got, it got bonked by the Ban Hammer. So, Volt Switch, Flora Cannon, Ice Beam, Flash Cannon has a very, very high surprising rate, especially when you're either a Cortana, or Hydra a Hydreigon, or a Gliscor, coming in, anticipating it to be slower, and you allowing, and allowing you to get off massive attacks off, but then, it's Scarf and it just outspeeds you and kills you, which is hilarious. Here is Articuno Galar, the Psycho Shift set with Life Orb, no, I mean Flame Orb, sorry. It is absolutely hilarious as a burn dispenser. Trust me. Here's my sweeper, a Sea King of all things, with Scale Shot Swords Dance, applying Garshop logic to a Sea King, and it works. Here is Vikavolt with Blunder Policy Zap Cannon, which is very fun. And for more cheese, I put it as a physical set, because why not? Tapu Bulu with the infinite healing of Horn Leech, Leech Seed, Leftovers, and Grassy Surge, which is going to be amazing as a stall, uh, as a stall Pokemon. And lastly, Zygarde 10%. It was just for fun. The Sub Split set, it is always fun to run Sub Split. It just puts a, you know, a stupid amount of pressure on the opponent's team for some reason. <laughs> so yeah, this team is very dumb, but. It holds itself pretty well. Okay, so this is, well, my other dumb meta team. And first of all, I feel like we should introduce the MVP, which is Sizzler. This is not your, well, typical full adamant nature attacking Sizzler. This is a defensive Swords Dance Sizzler. And you, the reason I have this idea is because of none other than, you guessed it, Dumpster Fire, the Groudon. You can run Swords Dance on a defensive variant and get away with it, which is hilarious. So that Swords Dance, Bullet Punch, Superpower, and Roost, and Roost, you will see, has let a tank so much damage. And yeah, moving on. Into none other than Articuno Galarian. And, um, ugh, this set sucks. <laughs> I'm not even kidding, this that actually sucks. Psycho Chef Freezing Glare used to recover with a Flame Warp, max health, max speed, timid nature, no modest, just raw burn dispensing. And unfortunately, it doesn't really get to shine a lot on these replays because there's not much of a chance, but I think Ryan honestly did a better job at showcasing this, so I'm not going to elaborate much on this, so let's go on to Cinderace. Cinderace has U-turn, Court Change, High Jump Kick, and Power Ball, which is weird because it's partners with a Pelipper. A freaking Pelipper with a Cinderace that's spamming its stabs. I didn't know where I was going for this, but Hyper Offense is Hyper Offense. And um, I think you can see what happens when I click on the Pex, which is Choice Bad Pex. Gunk Shot, Liquidation, Knock Off, Toxic Splice. Instead, I'm not running the freaking defensive Choice Man Packs because that's literally violent in common sense, and instead just sticking to a freaking Choice Man Max HP Max Offense Toxic Packs. It is dumb, and it is very fun. <laughs> and now Pelipper, Deval Kerbukane Skull User. Now, you might be asking, Ethanol, why didn't you put Roost on your Pelipper? Yeah, I really wanted to slap on U-turn, so I feel like Roost wasn't that necessary on Pelipper. Besides, Pelipper kind of is a sack in most cases, more cases than one, when, sh when stuff goes wrong. Which, well, leads us to the only partner Pelipper technically has, which is none other than Regilecki, but with Thunder. I cannot stress enough, that move hits like a truck. And you'll see why very, very soon in the later replays. Unfortunately, well, most of the teams I ran into were gra had ground types on them, so I couldn't really do much. Or Volt Absorb, so, but 
Yeah, Reggie Lucky, under the right circumstances, is insanely powerful. And you did not want to get on its bad side. Trust me. So, here is a pretty standard uh, National Dex team. So, without further ado, let's go into the replay. So, here I lead with Mag because it's a pretty good lead here. I Volt Switch Shadow the Melmetal into Tapu Bulu to absorb the incoming Earthquake, which is reduced even more with Grassy Terrain. And then I get, and I heal back to 100%. And then I switch back to that, to Vigavolt, to tank, to tank another hit. And then I connect the Zap Cannon, which does massive damage, and gets the Paralysis support. But then Double Iron Bash just killed it, which is unfortunate. So Vigavolt goes down here, and then I just go to the Zygarde 10% to revenge kill the Melmetal safely. And here he goes to Superior, so I'm just start subbing. PV sawing away his least runs. I know it's gonna go to plus four, but then ah well. It's not like all my other Pokemon has anything to do with it. Because Tapu Bulu at plus four, because of grassy terrain, right? It just gets killed, which is unfortunate. So obviously let's get some chip damage off of Pain Split and recover ourselves quite a bit. But then we die anyway, so whatever. We did half that. But then we had the twist, that was Scarf Megirna. So here we go, I bring it in, which kills the superior, which is fantastic. And then, he doesn't know that I'm Scarf yet for some reason, and brings in Kartana. And I bring it down to Sash, as Sacred Sword does not a lot, and then he just forfeits. <laughs> this is good gameplay. And this is why you do not underestimate Seeking. So here it is, Ninja I anticipated that will be the lead. Because I had skill shot, right? I can break the stats, so we started a sword stance race here. And then, he went for another one, and it's just making me to go for another one, but it's like, nope, I'm just gonna go for skill shot here. But it turns out, he has a Citrus Berry, and that's skill shot 5 hit, which means that Ninja is now dead, which is fantastic. He goes to Tapu Koko, which I'm like, hmm. And then, because, like, I have Lightning Rod, so I don't really care. He goes to Magnezone, he absorbs my Drill Rod, and then he goes for Explosion, which brings me down to my Sash. And then, he goes to Tapu Koko, and like... And I actually outspeed it, for some reason. He said that he had, um... He said that he had, um, equal EVs across the board. And Gyarados just dies here because of that crit scale shot, so like, wow. Here goes Omaldo, and I just waterfall it to death. And then I was actually seeing if he would actually remember that I have Lightning Rod, but he just gave up there, and he just let me have the Fish Sweep, so kudos to you, guy. <laughs> kudos to you. Thanks for the Fish Sweep. So here's a snippet from when the team was still in development. Let's dive right into it. So, here we are, my Articuno versus a specially defensive Heatran, judging by it having Iron Defense. The funny thing is, I think the Heatran has Toxic, but because of my Flame Orb, he cannot poison me, which is hilarious. Okay, there's a Magma Storm Mess, which is unfortunate for my opponent. I'm just gonna spam Freezing Glitter like a little idiot here. He hits his Magma Storm, and then that ship damage brings me down to the danger zone. I recover. It was my only play at that time. So yeah, I'm just gonna start spamming recover here, hoping for a Magma Storm miss. And yeah, that's basically what I do here. It's my only play. And guess what? I got the Magma Storm miss. So yeah, Pog. <laughs> okay, and I just Freezing Glare here. He misses another Magma Storm, which is unfortunate. And then now, I freeze and glare, and watch this, I froze the Heatran. I froze the Heatran, and then, which means, technically, my Articuno has 1v1'd a Heatran. And I'm gonna end it on this funny. Never mind, I recover here. But then, this, watch it. This is the funny! There we go! Oh, never mind, I still use- I still use Recover here. <laughs> Sorry, guys. And there it is! The Psycho Ship Burn on the Chansey. The Burn Dispenser. So yeah, I'm just gonna stop it right there. And 
Hope you enjoy Eternal's replays as well. Okay, so this is quite an odd battle. See, Articon gets Freezing Glare, and I, but he freezes on Feral first, which means he knocks out my Flame Orb, so I can't pull out the dumb tech. And you can see me rage for a moment, it's like, damn it! Which is, well, kind of dumb, but oh well. It's not that bad. I was switching to Scizor, I got Leash Seated, so I have to switch into Charles Apex. He goes into Pelipper, which is kind of what I want, honestly. But apparently, Pelipper U turns into his Zapdos. And I only got managed to knock off Zapdos having V boots. Knowing that that's Thunder, I go to Articun Gowers, hoping to sack it. And I do sack it. Which means I can now bring in Regieleki to put immense pressure and then bait his Swampert out. Because <laughs> I honestly have no idea how I managed to read that, but oh well, I'll go with it. I managed to instantly burn the Fair for turn 1 because. RNG.exe and then Hurricane his Fairford almost into Oblivion, which is really, really good for just pressuring your Fairford. I use turn and hope he switches out, but apparently not, so I guess I'm stuck with a Regieleki now against a Fairford with Thunder. I wrap a spin, but then Fairford decides to leech seed in me, actually, no, knock off. So now I'm stuck with Regieleki with Vitamin Magnet under, not under Rain anymore. But thankfully, Electro Ball kills the Thero, which means I have a bit more leeway to my game. I then go to Scizor to attack the Grassy Gut, but apparently he U turns, which leads us into Pelipper. Because, of course, I mean, I kind of know in retrospective I was expecting that. Then he goes to the Toxic the Toxapex. Thankfully, his Pelipper doesn't stop for me. Which is, well, nice. And then Pelipper U turns into a Swampert. I go into my Pelipper to protect Earthquake, but apparently High Force powers because, oh yeah, Lillaboom has grassy terrain, so of course. Flipter does a massive chunk to my Pelipper. I go, he goes Zapdos, I go Skull again, and I actually burn a turn one again. This is really depressing. I go into my Cinderace, he thunders, which puts the effort to help, which definitely is not a good spot to be in. He tends to go to Rillaboom, I predict that, and I, well, U-turn into his scissor again. He goes Pelipa, I start Swords Dancing because Jesus Christ, Scissor is a monster. And, well, if it were not for Kingdra, I probably would have swept his entire team with a scissor. I Swords Dancing again, he scalds, it somehow doesn't burn, I roost the damage off a lot for a long, long time. I'm just stalling time out for, like, Rain to, like, not really Oko me. Or Scott to burn me. So then I roost again. He goes Rillaboom, which is a weird choice, but I'll respect it. I go Super Power, he goes I go Roost again. I basically just trying to roost with the damage. And Super Power doesn't crit, thankfully. Yay! And then Roost the damage off again. And then I bullet punch and basically expect the entire game to go down then. The problem is that well, Kangra doesn't die to pull a punch. And Scizor goes down. Rest in peace, Scizor. I go to Halapur expecting to sack, but nope. It apparently misses, and a hurricane is like, we take those, honestly. <laughs> no offense to the guy, but like, wow, I'm sorry. He thunders my Regieleki, and it somehow lives. Pog. And he goes into the report, which I was expecting, so I wrap it in. Unfortunately, my Regieleki doesn't have explosion like Ryan does, so all I can do is just continuously sack. And then, he moves into Zapdos. Which now, as you probably guessed it, is the perfect time to go Cinderace. He switches to Port again, which I was kind of expecting, so I go to Toxapex. And we can finally see Toxapex getting his first kill. Yay! <laughs> okay, so, after that, while well, Zapdos roots the damage off, I almost kill it. But static paralyzes me, which leaves him with an even harder time of looking at the Zapdos. Unfortunately, Tossabex gets paralyzed, so I can't do much about that. And Zapdos is back at full health. Almost at full health. Oh. And Tossabex goes back to half health. So it roots damage off again, which is depressing, and Tossabex gets paralyzed. And really, this was a huge. Let's say this was a roller coaster. I mean, it was a huge roller coaster because Elipper was basically dead meat. So, a Pyre Ball's Weather Ball, unfortunately for him, doesn't kill. This is why I did not want to set up the Weather. So, Pyre Ball in the end kills, and that's the game. Oh, 
that took me five minutes to record. I hope you guys are happy. So this replay is not really an actual showcase of the entire team, but rather just Megascizor.exe. So Pelipper first scalds Shuckles to death, and then he, well, decides to stop fucking again. I can forgive that because I do not want Webs to go up, and I do not want his Zero Orb to switch in. Rox is a way easier hunter to deal with than Webs. I can guarantee you that. So Young goes Echoed Voice, which is, well, unfortunate, but eh, I can roll with that. Pelipper wasn't really the huge win con here. And then I bring in Scizor. He is actually terrified here. I can say that. He all goes Echo Voice and hoping to, like, actually kill. It's apparently Spec Sylvia, but okay then. A Bullet Punch, it does 28 on plus 2. That is insane. I, I cannot stress enough how insane that actually is. So then, uh, he goes bulk up again, I sword stance again, and he doesn't bulk up price, he instead goes for agility, which I really, really just exploded the hell out of, and then I bullet punch him to death. Corviknight goes down, he goes on this group at which I'm anticipating goes down to heat wave, but apparently, it has nasty plot. What? That was a strat, apparently. I'm not gonna go to play about that. And then I thought I was like, yeah. So this is gonna go on a pass off this. But apparently no, it goes Electro Ball out of Scizor. And then he forfeits. Okay, so this is basically a really, really fun game I had. It was against a 1,700 ladder guy. Which I cannot stress enough just how the heck did I win that? So basically, he goes right into Magirna, I go Pelipper, he both switches into all that, and Grassy Glide does 40% of my article, which just switched in, and I think I deduced that it was a choice ban right there. And then I cycle shift Magirna, which is the only thing article actually did just now, which is unfortunate. He both switches into his Blissey, I predict that with u turn and I go into Regilecki. Although I could have gone Scizor, but I'm really scared of that slow bro. So I Thunder, he goes Stealth Rock, which is okay, I guess. And a Rapid Spin, just to get rocks off. And apparently, it really did not care about damaging Regieleki at all, which is something I'll go into later, because you did not want to face a full health Regieleki. Spamming Thunder. I'm not even kidding, it's terrifying, as you'll see in the future. He teleports into Rillaboom, which is well, something I anticipate. Which is okay, I guess. I go into Toxic X. Super powered. Eat. Super got eaten, yeah. Palabes can almost have a gun shot, but I decided nah, I'm gonna Toxic Spikes. And that Toxic Spikes, strangely enough, applies a lot of pressure to his Rillaboom, his, well, probably Metacham, and his Como O. Especially the Como O, because that Como O. Well, guess what it has? Yes. It's a Z-move combo, but thankfully because it's my defensive scissor, my scissor eats that and goes for sword stance instead. Future side doesn't do a lot, it's 20% which is negligible, I bullet punch, he earthquakes and instead of flame forwarding, I don't know why he didn't go close combat but oh well. Bullet punch to the win for a win, that happens. And in comes his meta champ. His meta champ well has fake out and scissor eats again. Which is, yay, I love my scissor. Meta champ goes down. Again, he goes into Rillaboom. Finally, I go into Articuno Gano or Atomic to sack it. Because I know that Grassy Glass is gonna go kill my scissor though, then. And then I go Cinderace to force more pressure onto his Rillaboom. He goes slow, bro. And now I realize it's actually a boot slow, bro. So then I go to Palapur for reasons just to. Do more damage on Slowbro instead of Regio Lucky. I don't know why we didn't go Regio Lucky. Slowbro gets confused and hits itself, which is depressing. He goes Magirna, a U turn into none other than, you guessed it, Regio Lucky. Yay! And then Thunder does a ludicrous amount of damage to his Boom over half. So, he, Aggressive Terrain thankfully runs out. That means Regio Lucky has more time to do more damage. Thunder takes out a Blissey, ladies and gentlemen, look at this! Regieleki taking out a freaking Blissey! I go Toxel Packs, he Grassy Glides, which does over half, which is unfortunate because I ran Max of Max Attack, 
which means Toxic Effect isn't really going to see the light of day a lot. So Scizor gets Grassy Planet, gets Sacks to Rillaboom, rest in peace. And then he goes Cinder I go Cinderace, he goes into Slowbro because he really, really doesn't want me to set up that close with a boom and remove his huge source of pressure. And then a U-turn, it doesn't live, but uh, apparently he goes for future sight, which is okay. I thought he was teleport, honestly, but both switch for the win, I kill a slow bro, and all I need to do is take out that Rillaboom. And then it's basically game. He grassy glides, I eat that hop, which, well, not really ate, but whatever. I then kill his Rillaboom, which kind of was unfortunate, but that was the only thing he could do. Slow Pelipper tanks the future site, Magirna vote switches and kills Pelipper, unfortunately, but we have a Regieleki. There's nothing he can do against a Regieleki on full health. And yeah, it's basically game. Regieleki, the MVP of this game. And I guess it wasn't a bad idea to slap Thunder on a Regieleki. So please, Pierre Pelipper, Pex, and Regieleki on the same team. It's gonna be hilarious. And run Scissor 2 for good measure. Articuno just sits there. Trust me, it's not really a good strat. But oh well, just go try it at your own risk, and um, yeah. That's the I sure hope you all have enjoyed this video, and yeah, forgive our ELO ratings for dropping quite a bit because of this video alone. But then, yeah, I guess, good luck to you guys, and see you in the next one.